What's up, everyone? Welcome back for the next game. All right, so this time we got the Bucks taking on the Bulls. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. This is going to be the last game for today, so hopefully these two teams put on a good show. That being said, I've been drinking a lot of energy drinks, so I'm going to go take another piss again. And, uh, yeah, so you guys sit back, relax, enjoy the uh, enjoy the show, and I'll be back in just a minute. The 2K Sports pregame show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. Ernie Johnson here with my esteemed colleagues, Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. We're bringing you the Chicago Bulls out at United Center as they'll face off against the Milwaukee Bucks. Well, for Milwaukee, they're looking to come out strong and make their mark early. They have to look at this game as a great opportunity to do just that. Where well, we get to see the big man out of Georgetown tonight, six foot eleven Greg Monroe, highly sought after in the offseason and free agency. Pretty good all around player, Shaq. Yeah, and he's very comfortable with the ball in his hands. Uh, he's great at creating his teammates for from the elbow and looking for their own shots. Yeah, I like this guy. I do, man. I'm not joking. You think I'm joking? I really like this guy. No, you're not play, joking. He can play center. He can play forward. He's versatile. The lefty, which really is a little unorthodox, makes you kind of uh, a little bit backwards if you're a defender. His size is, is uh, greatly improved free throw percentage. So I like this guy, Monroe. The moose on the loose. And with the, the game just about ready to begin, time now to send it to Kevin Harlan for the call. Chicago Bulls. Welcome to 2K Sports, bringing you the NBA. With Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and our sideline reporter, Doris Burke, this is Kevin Hart. Here we go. And in Chicago to start out. All right, let's set the floor, courtesy of Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go on the court for the Bucks. Filling out the wings, it's Middleton and Antetokounmpo. Monroe is out there with Jabari Parker. And it's Carter Williams in at the one spot. It's incredible to think that Val Gasol last year set a career high in points in a game for as long Clark as he's played. He had that 46-point game in January. Yeah, that's 46 points for Powell to go with 18 rebounds. I mean, right. you rarely see a player of his age putting up a career high like that. Shot clock at two. Good work defensively by Gasol. And he rushed that one, no doubt about it. The out of position, you can see the frustration on his face. And he didn't get quite enough under that one. All right, I am back. Yeah, I got to say, that is the one thing that I love about doing these sports games for you guys, is that these are really easy videos for me to put together for you guys. Because, again, the game practically plays itself. Well, I mean, not practically. The game does play itself. The way that I do sports games, you know, I always like to just spectate the matches while I do the commentary. But yeah, I mean, these games play themselves, so it's very easy content for me to put together. So, yeah. And again, sometimes for me personally as a content creator, you know, don't get me wrong, I love action-packed kind of games, you know. Uh, First-person shooters, fighting games, shit like that, you know, hack and slash. I love that kind of shit. But every once in a while, you know, it's just nice to kick back, relax, and do an easy recording session. And that's why I like doing these sports games. You know, they give me a bit of a break, you know. Again, just very casual, easy content for me to throw together for you guys. It doesn't, you know, take too much for me on my end. Just kind of get to sit here, relax, and enjoy some sports. All that good shit. But, yeah, that's why over the past, you know, couple of years, really ever since I got my hands on the Xbox is when I really started getting into uh, doing these sports games for you guys because my brother gave me a bunch of his NHL games and it was really that that got me into you know really doing a bunch bunch of these uh, sports games for you guys so so yeah I've enjoyed it gotta say I've definitely enjoyed it but yeah like I said I love doing these videos for you guys so easy to throw this content together for you guys. 
I love it. It's great. Plus, I've gotten to learn some more about some sports that I didn't really know much about before. You know, like basketball, hockey, baseball, even soccer a little bit. Gasol drops two. You know, and, and with Paul Gasol, it was weird to think that the Lakers were just so ready to let him go and move on. Now here's Carter Williams. Fades back, and that one's good. Parker. Now that's an old school move right there. A good one, too. The fadeaway. Just around a minute and a half. So yeah, the Bulls are, of course, my hometown team. You know, because I live in the Chicagoland area. Although the past several years, I mean, the Bulls really haven't been worth a damn. This last past year was the first year when, when they've actually shown some level of competence, honestly. So, yeah. This is actually the first year, because again, I work at a sports bar, and this is the first year, like, I've ever seen anyone actually request to have the Bulls game put on one of the TVs. So we have, like, a lot of TVs all throughout the fucking, uh... Uh, a restaurant, you know, because again, we're a sports bar. Um, but yeah, this is like the first year that I can remember I've actually had people request to put the Bulls game on a TV because the Bulls have actually been somewhat decent this year. But yeah, we don't really get a whole lot of Bulls fans. We used to get a lot of Blackhawks fans back in the day, but that's kind of dwindled down a bit because the Blackhawks have been kind of sucking ass. Ever since they won the Stanley Cup in 2015. Because that was the first year I started working at the restaurant was uh, 2015. It was the year that the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup. And every other night we were swamped with Blackhawks fans because there was playoff hockey like every other night. But recently there haven't really been a whole lot of that. You know, you get your baseball fans here or there. You know, some Cubs fans, some Sox fans. Um, you know, so you get that here or there. Um, and you get all kinds of football fans in there. You know, Bears fans, Packers fans. I'd say those are the two most common. But you get, you know, all kinds of fans in there. Football is one of those weird kind of things where, like, you find, like, you know, fans of every different team, like, all over the place. You know, we have fucking Seahawks fans, Cowboys fans, you know, pretty much any team you can name. But yeah, I mean, we have a majority, you know, Bears fans and Packers fans. Because the place I live at is somewhat close to the um, Wisconsin border. It's not super close. Like, the border is like 40 minutes from here, I want to say. I live about like 40 minutes away from the Wisconsin border. So, I mean, we get a fair amount of Packer fans. But, you know, we still get more Bears fans, I would say. Here's Monroe. Shot is off. Great defense that time from Noah. Nothing dropping for him, so I think in the best interest of his team, he may need to think about not shooting right now. No other screen. Unlady kicks to Buck. Dishes to Gasol. The shot's good on the assist by Butler. And Bullseye with that assist. Nice delivery there in traffic. The Bucks trail. Bucks. But yeah, I, I, was, I was also working there when the uh, when the Cubs won the um, uh, World Series, too. That was a huge deal. We didn't get actually as busy for that as I was expecting. But, I mean, we still got pretty busy for that. But, yeah, I was kind of surprised. Because we weren't, like, as busy for the World Series with, when the Cubs won as I thought we'd be. I mean, we were still pretty busy, but not as busy as I was expecting. I would say, actually, we were more busy for when the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup than we were for the uh, Cubs winning the World Series. But yeah, I remember that night when the Cubs won the World Series. I mean, I went home that night. You could hear people setting off fireworks all over the place. That was one night where I did not get a lot of sleep. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Then there was that one year when the Bears actually made it to the playoffs and they lost on the famous missed field goal kick by Parkey. <laughs> that was one of the greatest moments ever. We were like packed, right? Just packed with Bears fans, right? And they're, they're some of the most annoying fans to deal with are Bears fans. 
You know, so I was frustrated having a bad day because we were super busy, super swamped, and it was annoying having to deal with, you know, all the Bears fans and shit. It's just to see their disbelief and stuff at the missed field goal was hilarious. The whole mood in the restaurant was just, oh, <laughs> it was so fucking funny. I will never forget the expression on people's faces. There were people shouting like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Uh, I really do hate Bears fans. I'm going to be honest. Bears fans are some of the drunkest, rudest motherfuckers out there. Fucking hate them. Not to mention they're just all stupid. They're all like, oh, we got uh, fucking, what's his face now? Justin Fields, we're going to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, okay. You just keep dreaming. The Bears fucking suck, and the Bears always will fucking suck. It's like the Detroit Lions, you know? I mean, at least, to be fair, at least the Bears do show some level of promise from time to time, and they do actually have some good players from time to time. You know, whereas, like, the Lions, even when they do have good players, they just still somehow fucking suck. <laughs> you know, but... Uh, Generally speaking, the Bears fucking suck every year. At best, they're mediocre. You know, at best, they're okay. They show some signs of promise here or there, but, like, Bears fans are just, like, always in denial. And the crisp passing has opened things up for them offensively. Ten straight points off assist. That's very impressive, and it also makes the game easy and fun to watch. Here is Bayless. He hasn't scored yet. That, I'm sure, will change. Parker outside from about 16, and the jumper falls for him. Nice piece of work there. Get yourself a little space and pull the trigger. Brooks outside. Heinrich outside. All right, well, guys, that's it for the first quarter. Stay tuned for the second quarter coming up next. And until then, peace out.